In this video, we will look at the problem with 3000 watt power inverters connected directly to a 12 volt battery. You will see that this can actually cause quite a few complications, even with lithium batteries. On top of that, a single battery is not always enough. So we will see how many are actually needed. The goal here is to open your eyes to the amperage levels in a 12 volt circuit with such power, the risks involved, and the solutions available to address this issue. This will help preserve the lifespan of your devices, reduce costs, and maximize the safety of your installation. Stay until the end of the video, as I will also share some wiring diagrams and case studies. But before we start, feel free to check out our wiring diagram pack in the description. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, give a thumbs up, and ask your questions in the comments. Before revealing the best way to power a 3000 watt power inverter, it is essential to understand what this power represents in terms of current. The basic formula for calculating current is a current equal power divided by voltage for a 12 volt system. The current is equal to 3000 watts divided by 12 volts, which gives 250 amperes. Handling currents of 250 amperes is far from ideal, especially in a camper van or an RV. This requires, among other things, very thick and expensive dot cables. For a 24 volt system, the current is equal to 3000 watts divided by 24 volts, which gives 125 amperes. Here, the current is already reduced by half, which is significant. It remains high, but is much easier to manage, as you will see later. For a 48 volt system, the current is equal to 3000 watts divided by 48 volts, which gives 62.5 amperes. This is much easier to handle, allowing the use of thinner and more affordable cables. So what are the advantages of increasing the voltage to reduce the current? In reality, there are quite a few, but I will mention only four here. Reduction of energy losses, P equals RXI2. Joule effect losses, meaning heat, are proportional to the square of the current. Reducing the current decreases these losses and improves the overall efficiency of the system. Thinner and less expensive cables. As mentioned earlier, high current requires thicker cables, which are costly and difficult to handle. With a higher voltage, such as 24 volts or 48 volts, the current decreases, allowing the use of thinner and more affordable cables. Cheaper charges and charge controllers. A solar regulator in a 12 volt system has to handle high currents, whereas in a 48 volt system, for example, the current is divided by four. This significantly affects the price of the device. Better battery preservation, excessive current can prematurely wear out batteries. Reducing it allows for a longer lifespan and a more efficient overall performance. Now, let's go back to our 3000 watt inverter and see if it can be connected to a 12 volt lithium battery. First of all, don't think that this conversion happens without any loss. An inverter typically has an efficiency of around 90%. So, if you want to draw 3000 watts from the inverter, it means that the battery will actually have to provide more than 3000 watts. The formula is as follows. Input power equals output power divided by efficiency. Here, 3000 watts divided by 0.9 gives us 333 watts. This is the actual power that will be drawn from the battery. And with a 12.8 volt battery, we reach a record current of 260 amperes. This brings us to a problem I often see, connecting an inverter that is much more powerful than what the battery can actually deliver. Let's take an example. With a 12 volt, 100 ampere hour battery, the maximum output current of the BMS is 100 amperes. At 12.8 volts, 100 amperes, we get 1280 watts. So a 1000 watt inverter is fine, but at 1500 watts, it already won't work. What about a 12 volt, 200 ampere hour battery? Be careful. Most 200 ampere hour batteries have a 100 ampere BMS, except for higher end models with a 200 ampere BMS. At 12.8 volts, XX 200 amperes, we get 2560 watts. That's better, but still not enough for a 3000 watt inverter. As for 300 ampere hour batteries, most of them also have a 200 ampere BMS. If we take our standard 12 volt 100 ampere hour batteries, we now know that to technically connect them to a 3000 watt inverter, we will need three of them. We will connect them in parallel, all linked to bus bars, and the inverter will be connected to the bus bars. The batteries can supply a total of 300 amperes, so they can handle the 260 amperes demand we calculated earlier. Here, each battery shares the load. Based on our example, at 260 amperes, each battery will have a maximum charge current of 86.6 amperes. Now, regarding circuit protection and cable sizing, I always use my calculator, which performs the calculation using the formula. It is important to know that the inverter I have was delivered with 50 square millimeter cables with a length of 70 centimeters, which is quite short. 
It is slightly oversized, so if you plan to increase the distance, the section can be maintained for a short distance. Beyond that, the cable section increases very quickly. For battery cables, we must assume they can draw 100 amperes. So, depending on the round trip distance, it could be 16 square millimeters or even 25 square millimeters. It always depends on the distance and the voltage drop you choose to have, whether 1%, 2%, or 3%, knowing that exceeding 3% is prohibited. The higher the current, the lower the percentage of voltage drop I use personally. The bus bars must also support 300 amperes, which is why we do not connect directly to a battery terminal. For fuses, it is quite simple. Each battery can be protected by a fuse. To calculate it, we can simply take a margin of 20 or 25 percent. So 100 amperes multiplied by 1.25 equals 125 amperes. And of course, we also place a fuse on the positive cable of the inverter. A 20 percent margin for 260 amperes gives 312 amperes. But the closest standard at 300 amperes could be sufficient in this case, as the next step is 350 amperes which seems too high for this specific situation. We will now look at another interesting example with two 200 ampere hour batteries and a 200 ampere BMS. Be careful as they are directly connected to a 3000 watt inverter. But this time we will demonstrate with a battery setup in parallel first, then in series. Here we will still assume that the inverter can draw more than 3000 watts from the battery. So with 90% efficiency, we will stick to 3033 watts. Since the nominal voltage of the batteries is still 12.8 volts, we will always have 260 amperes to cover in terms of current. With the two batteries in parallel, the maximum potential current is therefore 400 amperes. As a result, the current per battery will only be 130 amperes for a maximum current of 200 amperes, which is well below the BMS limit. Regarding the wiring and protections, we can still use the original 50 square millimeter cables from the inverter, which will be connected to the bus bars. Then, each cable between the batteries and the bus bars will have a cross section of 25 to 35 square millimeters, depending on the length, which will be more than sufficient. We will add a 150 ampere fuse per battery. If the maximum current never exceeds 130 amperes, there is no need to oversize the fuse to 200 amperes or more. On the contrary. The advantage of this setup is that it provides more margin in terms of total power, as the two batteries together can supply up to a total power of 5120 watts. We will finally make the connection with the introduction of this video. By connecting the batteries in series, we will keep the same capacity, but we will gain a huge advantage. In series, voltages add up, but the capacity remains the same. 2. 12.8 volts, 200. Ampere hour batteries in series give a total voltage of 12.8 volts to equal 25.6 volts and a capacity of 200 ampere hours, which remains the same. With a voltage of 25.6 volts, the current required by the inverter will be 130 amperes. In series, the current remains the same in all batteries because there is only one path for the current. So 130 amperes. The batteries can supply up to 200 amperes thanks to their battery management system. So they fully support the demand. No change here. As you have seen, the electrical diagram is a bit simpler because it eliminates the bus bars. Of course here, we will have a 24 volt inverter instead of a 12 volt one. This allows the current at the inverter terminals to be divided by two. The cable section will therefore be smaller for the inverter and we will only need a single very short cable to connect the two batteries together. To summarize the advantages, reduced current, fewer losses, thinner and cheaper cables, lower risk of overheating, the idea of this video was to make you aware of high currents and the advantage of increasing the voltage in a direct current electrical installation. I hope this was useful to you. Remember to subscribe to the channel, leave a like, and feel free to ask your questions in the comments. See you soon.